Hey out there, it's Wake Angel 2001 bringing you a couple of, um, bringing you an, an out of sequence uh, Sonic Boom vlog. Yeah, um, I was uh, reading up on some journals on DeviantArt and somebody linked to a couple of episodes that were dubbed. Um, the, the proper show doesn't return to give new episodes again until August, so rather than wait an extra month and a half, um, somebody actually put up a couple. They are Blue with Envy and Hoarding the Horde. Um, so I'm not sure what the proper numbers of these are supposed to be. Um, I think Blue with Envy is supposed to be 28, but um, we'll do the... I'll, I'll, when, when the episodes actually air on American television, then I'll, you know, know. So, uh, let's start with Blue with Envy, because it was the first one I was linked to. Um, okay, spoilers, because... Uh, if you, if you haven't seen these episodes, then, um, I don't know, maybe search for them on YouTube. They're posted by somebody named Crazy Sonic Fan 110 and the episodes are called Blue with Envy and Hoarding the Horde. So, if you want to watch these episodes before I talk about them, now will be the time to pause my video and then search for them. This is your last warning, because I'm going to talk about the episodes now, and here we go. So, Blue with Envy. It's about a fan character. Okay, what can I say? Um, I believe his name is Speedy the Shrew or something like that. Um, okay, there are so, so much meta humor in this episode. I was like, this episode is completely made out of meta humor. Uh, first of all, um, this Sonic and his friends are eating at Meh Burger when this, uh, totally cool rad dude comes in. They zoom. And, like, um, and, like, he's basically a physical embodiment of a fan character from 1994. Like, he speaks in 90-isms, like that, that old-fashioned slang that nobody actually used back then. Although, admittedly, 90 Sonic may have used some of it in the older cartoons. Uh, but it sounds extremely dated now. Uh, he has, like, those Venetian blind shades that were totally the cool thing about two years ago um and he he rides around on a skateboard like it's kind of like if you cross bart simpson with classic sonic and colored him up like scourge and his basic deal is that he's um he, he's one-upping sonic he's like he's like uh everybody likes him more and they're all swooning and even sticks and amy swoon over him like i never thought i'd ever hear sticks swoon over anybody like, how bad does she have it for him? She says that if you were to ever visit her house, she'd disable her booby traps. Like, oh my god, that's like third base for her. <laughs> oh god, this guy. This guy annoyed me so much I wanted to I wanted to punch myself repeatedly in the head so I could ever so I could forget that this was ever a thing we thought was totally radical, dude! <laughs> All right, so uh, basically, this guy he he's kind of a uh, douche, and he keeps he keeps one upping Sonic, and he says he's he's endearing himself to everyone in the village, including Sonic's friends, and he says that he's faster than him, and I love the way Sonic reacts. I'm totally faster than you, and as Sonic reacts, you're not faster than me. Like like he drops his voice a couple registers, and he just no. You're not faster than me. He, that, they're like, you do not even joke about being faster than Sonic. You don't even joke about that. You do not do that. You are not faster than Sonic. You don't even kid. No. That, that, that's serious. You, you don't do that. Um, yeah. Um, I should also note that, uh, that the shrew... He's about the same height that classic Sonic is in proportion to modern Sonic in the Sonic Generations game. I remember when um, when Sonic Gen when Sonic Generations came out, I was really I really wanted classic Sonic to speak. I wanted him to be voiced by Jaleel White, in fact. But uh, no, we're not. Um, I get. I guess this is kind of like what we would have gotten, except that. They completely went out there with all the annoyingness of 90-isms. It's just terrible. Okay, so that's the thing that we did. Um, oh, shoosh. Alright, so basically, 
With that challenge laid down, um, Speed Shoe challenges Sonic to a race, uh, and the winner of the race gets eternal bragging rights, and the loser has to leave town. So uh, they take a race around the village, and every time Sonic passes him, he see he keeps seeming to appear in front of him. So Son so Sonic. Uh, goes into maximum speed and he crosses the finish line completely confident that he won because he saw himself pass Speedy but Speedy didn't pass him again but when he gets there to the to the finish line uh, he finds that Speedy was already there and got a milkshake while he was waiting for Sonic to reach so like um so what the hell so, Son so Sonic gets banished um by the way the callback joke irritable bowl syndrome haha -ha. um so the, the mayor bans Sonic and they send him to city limits. And it's funny because after they ban Sonic, all he does is kind of stand right there at the, at the town border and like, like try to walk in while two cops are standing and saying, nope, nope, nope. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know what Sonic, I, I, I don't know. Like, like classic 90s Sonic would have just like, he would have just gone running around because I don't think he ever settled in a single place. But this Sonic... This Sonic doesn't know what to do with himself when he's not living in town. So he, he, um, so, so back in the town, um, it turns out that Doc, Dr. Robotnik comes in and says that Speedy was his greatest robot ever. Or should he say, robots. Because it turns out that not only was Speedy the shrew of a robot, but he was part of an army of robots. And that's how they were able to win the race, because there were several speedies along the track who would just start running whenever Sonic passed one of them. So... So they, um... So Dr. Robotnik says that when he... Says that now, now that Sonic's been chased out of town, uh, he can fulfill his lifelong dream of conquering it and building an amusement park with... With long lines, overpriced merch, weak old food filled with preservatives, and it all started with a shrew. And then he puts on an Eggman hat. And you think, this is so many callbacks at the same time. This is like, okay, this is, um, he, first of all, he's freaking making Disneyland. I mean, he even puts on a Mickey Mouse-esque cat. And when you think about it, like, like Speedy the Shrew, a shrew is a rodent that's closely related to a mouse, and um, he's about the he's about the height of and proportions of Mickey Mouse. So we basically have Speedy the Shrew is evil Mickey Mouse, or should I just say Mickey Mouse, <laughs> because Disney's evil. Um, so yeah, like Doc, Dr. Eggman's great ambition is to build Disney World, and. Um, and you think, like, his Eggman empire, like, he, he's always building Eggman land. Like, Eggman land. That sounds less like a country and more like a theme park. And Dr. Eggman, and you think, think his evil fortresses, their security systems always look like giant circuses. There's like, there's like gambling arenas and, and roller coasters. And, and like, he's always building giant theme park related death traps in the video games. So like, yes. That's what he's trying to do. Like, boom, mind blow. So, um, so, so when they realize, but the thing is that the the town council reconvenes to unbanner Sonic since you know the Speedy cheated in the race technically. So um, they they convene and they say all those in favor of unbanishing Sonic, everyone goes aye. All those opposed, nee. Dave the intern said nay. Dave the intern, gotta love recur recurring characters. So, um, so majority wins, and uh, and they tell the cops to let Sonic through. So Sonic runs in, he destroys all the speed of the shoe robots, and as he blows them, they're like radical, 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 radical. <laughs> this charming last words. So he, so um, they win, and um, Doctor Eggman is chased out. He doesn't get his lifelong dream, whatever. And that's the end of the episode. It's... I don't know what to say. It's like, um... They're, they're make... This episode has so much meta humor. They're making fun of the... Of, of um... Of every fan... Oh, by the way, Speedy's design... He is every fan character I've ever refused to make, ever. He has a way too complicated outfit on. Um... He, he has sideburn dreads. He... He, he's, he 
acts like Sonic plus one. Like, like he, his personality is just like Sonic, but even cooler. And he's like Sonic, but even faster. Like, like he, yeah, like he, he's everyone's Mary Sue Sonic fan character. That if you ask me to make a custom of them, I say no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I, some of you know I have refused to make fan characters in the past, either because of too complicated designs or, or things I found maybe somewhat. Um, yeah, the, the, let's leave. It, let's not judge anybody, and let's just say that I've refused to make some fan characters in the past. Okay, so, um, oh, also, uh, there are some people that dump their entire fan character's backstory on me when they ask me to make the figure. Like, I don't need to know your fan character's backstory, like, when I make your figures. I just need to know what they look like. And I better, well, it still has some fans left. I better stop that little thread. Let's talk about the second episode I saw, the, um, the Hoarding the Horde. This is a stick-centered episode. Um... And I swear, I'm waiting to see a re-edit of this done with those little text walls, like on the show Hoarders. Um, uh, Dr. Eggman is using spider bots to hack all the coconuts and turn them into bombs. Um, and, um, and while everyone's trying him off, saying that this plan is just so weird even for him, they blow... Um, they, they blow up his Eggmobile, and like, you know in the video games, after you destroyed the death machine in the boss fight, what's left of the Eggmobile will be smoking and would go floating away with Eggman with his mustache all mussed up in, in the pilot seat? That's, um, that's what he does. He, he flies away in a puttering Eggmobile with his facial hair all messed up after all the coconuts blow up. It's a, it's, I like... I like all the callback stuff that they did in these two episodes. That, that's going to be the strong point. Callbacks and meta humor. Um, and then, um, what else did they do? They, uh, they, um, oh yeah, Amy wanted to end the fight uh, as quickly as possible because she promised Dix a girl's day out at the volcano. So, um, so they, they, the next scene is her in Stix's house and she's talking about all the things that she should have, like a, like a, like, what, what do you have in her purse? And Six is like, what the heck's a purse? And all this funny stuff. Um, basically, Amy goes to help Sticks get ready to take her stuff to, 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 to the volcano. And, uh, it turns out that she has a closet that's full of junk. So, she says that she's a pack rat. Because, I guess, I guess pack rat would be a term that, a a, a race of anthropomorphic animals would know as opposed to hoarder, which is, you know, the human term. It reminds me, in the, in the 100th episode of My Little Pony, there was a guy that used the term man, and Dr. Who's was like, what is this word you're using? Man? <laughs> like, <laughs> but I'm not talking about My Little Pony, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about um, Hoarder's Mobius edition. <laughs> um, okay, so things happen. Um, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, Amy organizes a garage sale, and um, and she keeps on ordering everybody around and telling them what to do. And um, and Sonic and friends accuse Amy of being a little take take controlish. Uh, she she's takeovery. It's a good thing they didn't say that she was bossy because then a bunch of of feminists would want to ban the episode. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. I came down on the on the feminists. What? What? Come on. Come on. Come at me. Come at me. I make toys and talk about cartoons. You're gonna accuse me of misogyny? Come on. Um. So. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> um. All right. So basically, the rest of this episode is basically um. There's a side gag with Dr. Eggman because Dr. Eggman has to be in every episode. Uh, he's trying to steal a comic book, which Sonic wants to charge $10 for. But every time he tries to sneak away with it, Sonic catches him, and he tries to haggle for a lower price. Amy, meanwhile, is getting sticks to get rid of all of her stuff. Like, um, like, you can't, you can't get rid of my, my beehive stick. That, my, my, uh, my great aunt gave me that. You can't take that, that cow skull. I keep the beehive stick in there. You can't take that patch of moss. If you hold it up to the sun and look at it sideways, it kind of looks like Amy with two noses. And it kind of did look like Amy. <laughs> at least, like, her silhouette. Um, 
So Amy, Amy is helping, is, is getting rid of everything for her. Uh, you know, they're selling her excess furniture, all this crap. And um, at, at one point she goes back and she finds this old surfboard, which she takes off and behind it is the door with that, that, that does this Gregorian sounding chant, like through an evil face on her. Oh, Lord, of course, Amy ignores the noise, thinking it's all in her imagination, and sells the surfboard for three bucks. And, uh, and then it, it turns, and then Stick says, wait a minute, the, the, the surfboard made out of the hardest wood available in the forest that was keeping a, a door with an evil skull closed? Yeah, that one. That was holding back the frog noise. Like, like, it turns out that there's this evil subterranean race of frog people that was living in behind the door in Stix's closet, and the surfboard was the only thing that was keeping the door prop closed. So with all this, with all the frog people attacking, everybody is riffing on Amy for her decision to take the surfboard. Oh, I'm sure you got a really good price for the surfboard, though. Like, oh, oh yeah, like it was probably perfectly worth it. All three bucks. <laughs> and like he's like, all right, all right, I admit I screwed up. Leave. <laughs> like, and, and in the end, the squirrels grab sticks and they pull her into the closet and close the door behind them. And like, oh no, what are we gonna do? Blame you? After that. <laughs> Uh, you know, that, that's like a South Park episode. Like, when a disaster happened, all the grown-ups were more concerned over who should take the blame rather than how they should fix the problem. Uh, that, is a pro that is a problem with our society. Whenever we have a crisis, it, people tend to be more keen on pointing out who's to blame rather than how to solve the problem. Okay, but I digress. Um, although that is, that is a nice, subtle little moral lesson in there, you know? Like, like, assigning blame doesn't help anybody. <sighs> um, man, this episode. Uh, so, the frog people want to sacrifice sticks, and, um, and Sonic and friends, they all make weapons and armor out of the junk from the garage sale, and they go down, they fight the frogs, and they rescue sticks, and they get back up, and Amy uses some hardwood shelving, which is dense and durable and will keep the door prop closed, but also is good for feng shui. And, um, and all the frog people are back in their subterranean dungeon thing, but they're like, now we have all this great furniture! Really brightens up the cave! Oh, and I swear, I cannot verify this, um, but I swear, one of the frogs in the audience is the voice of Donatello from the new Ninja Turtle series. Like, like, he's like, there's like a, the, when, when the chief frog says, there's like a bajillion of us. Uh, there's this one little frog guy in the audience who says, um, Day's, Day's home sick. Like, alright, there's a bajillion minus one. Like, like, the, the guy that goes, Day's home sick, he sounds exactly like Donatello. Like, like, someone has to do the research, find out if the guy who voice acts Donatello actually did that cameo, because that would be hilarious. Um... Yeah, so that's it. Um, so yeah, both of these episodes really get by in meta humor. There's some... Um, the first one particularly has like a whole anti-nostalgia thing going on. Like, haha, look at all the stupid stuff from the 90, from 90s tropes. Like, okay, do you remember how upset I was when Teen Titans Go did that Let's Get Serious episode? Where they, where they parodied all the... All the the Rob Liefeldian 90s comic book tropes. In that instance, it was bad because they were strawmanning the old cartoon series, which weren't like that. But the thing is, in this case, it, it was comically exaggerated, yes, but you have to admit, Sonic was more guilty of those 90s-isms. I mean, I mean, he didn't go full-on rocket power like what this guy did. This, yeah, this. Oh, that's what he is. He is. Um, he he is the fan character of that that one of the kids from Rocket Power would make up, cause cause he's totally that. All right, so that's enough of that. Um, these two episodes. Um, and I was hope I don't know how it's gonna be. Like I said. Could be pretty funny, but whatever. Um, uh, I hope I'm. I'm. 
I noticed a slight difference in the animation style too. I don't I don't know if it was because the color wasn't as saturated as usual, but the animation looks slightly more fluid and I noticed that the characters did some some movement, like some more subtle movement type things as they um, as they moved around. Like the animation just I don't know, it feels like it you know, it feels like the following season where the animators are more comfortable with how things are supposed to work and things, you know, it looks better. I think the animation quality has improved slightly. Okay, so there was uh, two episodes of Sonic Boom that I saw about a month and a half ahead of schedule. Um, this is Wake Angel 2001, and uh, I hope that when these episodes actually air on TV that I have something new to talk about.